on a new river this morning. The Anstanala, I believe is how you say it. I know approximately zero with this about this river. I have no personal experience on the actual river. Um, all I know is what I've researched online, so I can give you a little bit about that. Um, I know from this boat ramp, the way we're headed downriver, we're going to be looking at approximately 32 river miles to Rome. Water is extremely low. It seems like it's running super shallow, so I don't know how fast I'm going to be able to move along through. There's a couple tributaries I want to check out. There's a section from this boat ramp down to the next public boat ramp. It's about 17 miles. So we may run down to that and then run back up. But uh, I think there's gonna be some shoals and stuff I'm gonna have to deal with. So we'll just have to see as we go. Cool little John boat with an older 99 on it. That would be the first tributary that I was gonna check out, but <laughs> it's not even worth wasting my time. <laughs> Let's just hope that once we commit to this, we can get back up. Two and a half feet still. Still two and a half feet. Jumped up to four. Behind me, you can see there, it's just been straight. Steadily moving, probably moved a little over a mile, but the depth finder isn't reading anything over like 1.3, 1.4. I had to run the jack plate all the way up. So I wasn't dragging skeg. It drops to like 2.5 in some places like right now it's dropped up over two feet again but that coming out of those rapids back there it was like a foot 10 inches so the unknown factor is what's in the water i can't see more than two or three inches it's muddy this is exactly the kind of stuff that i came to look for gravel bar Nice sandbar. This time of morning, the gravel bar would be your ticket. It's still on the shade. Uh, that's not a sandbar, that's a gravel bar too. That looks like green water. And that's what I'm gonna shoot for and hope that it's steep enough to float me through. Ooh, big bass just swam under me. Another big bass. They're up on bed up in here. Interesting. Yeah, there's bottom. That is super shallow. This might have should have been a get out and walk the boat type of deal. And at this point, I think it is. Yep, we're stopped. Had I stayed just a little bit to the right, I could have avoided this shallow nonsense. Here we are. We made it through and that's what all that matters. Um, a big mud flat less than a foot deep almost ran off on it somebody's got it dammed up about halfway across the river right there with a pump 
on a trailer. It looks like for probably irrigating their, their field right up there. Things are getting pretty tricky down through here. Not at what I expected at all. I expected it to be relatively flat the entire paddle, but it seems like there's quite a few sets of shoals. Another one of those tributaries that I could see on the map that looked promising. A lot of trees though, about 25 yards in. Not even worth me getting up in there and having to turn around. This is actually supposed to be an island, but you can see they've dammed it up with just enough water to trickle through to keep it running somewhat, even though it's pretty stagnant back up in there. Water's super shallow, so I'm just gonna not take any chances and I'm gonna walk the boat down. This is the deepest part of the river all day from about the time right up where the rocks first start to right in there where I started making my way over to here was in the 11, 12 foot range. Notice that there is a no trespassing sign right there at that tree. So just to kind of honor and respect people's land and boundaries, I don't know if they can own the island, doesn't matter. There's some sketchy laws in Georgia that are extremely outdated when it comes to what you can and what you can't touch on the river. So just to be on the safe side, I anchored out in the water i'm not actually even i'm not actually even on the bottom i'm just floating here and i'm tied to a stick that was already in uh, just a quick update on the boat um, made quite a few changes um, i'll just go over them real quick one of the biggest things i did was add this switch panel in this actually came out of a, a big boat this came out of a key west center console since i'm not running the keyed system this first switch here is directly from the battery that I running on the boat. And as you turn it on, it turns on the lights. Can't see them and right then now. The rest of the switches work, everything else, bilge pump, and then fish finder, uh, the light bar on the front, um, water. I, I ordered a panel, so this is actually labeled as water with a fan, but it's actually a trolling motor. And then this one here is, both of these are actually gonna end up being spares even though this works the lights, but this is a actual spare. Um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna run there yet, but I added a trolling motor plug there, built a trolling motor mount to get it off the side of my boat. And as we're talking, I literally just ripped my light bar off. Added a cleat so I can get the bow rope down around this cleat when I'm going. I don't have to worry about it flying off and hitting my, or getting stuck in my prop. Uh, made a bracket for my bilge outlet so I didn't have to go out the side of the boat. It's riveted back there. Got these wires ran nice and tucked in. Got a tiller extension. I did actually pull this foam up and we put bracing in to keep it from smushing down on my gas can. One of the problems I was having is when Without the bracing there, it would smush down and push gas up out of the vent on the can and it would um, cause it to leak gas into the boat. Um, had that happen twice now, so put a stop to that. Everything's working out good so far other than I just ripped my light bar off. Um, that's gonna, really I need longer uh, rivets, which I do plan on getting anyways. I need some for the trolling motor mount, so easy fix all i gotta do is draw out that rivet and re-rivet it and hopefully it don't fly off between here and the time I make while it i was home. eating lunch i was trying to come up with the best way to describe this river so far the best way i can describe it is it reminds me a lot of a middle georgia to deep south georgia um real dark real stained uh real knee deep real shallow uh, swamp river basically is what I would call it. Um, basically anything south of Macon 
just turns into a wide river that's only needed you know thigh deep for the most part and real dark water all the time and it never lightens up and that's kind of what i've experienced up until this point but the odd thing being is it has rapids and shoals which you don't find a lot um especially in deep south uh deep south georgia rivers but this one's got rapids with that are rock ledges um so it's like a combination of both. It's, it's very strange. Check guy, I'm not too far from the 140 bridge, so I figured I'd run at least to the bridge. I'd really like to run just a tad past the bridge to Armucci Creek and uh, check out the mouth of Armucci Creek, but we'll see what it's like, what I'm looking like on time when I get to the 140 bridge. Yep, that's a big old gravel bar. That'd have been a rough to hit coming down through here on plane, and it's shallow, less than a foot, probably about five or six inches right here, honestly. I mean, eight inches on the paddle blade. <sighs> it is extremely hot today kind of got ruined from the mornings and the heat we were having last week it was like 58 in the morning 57 in the morning only getting up to like 78 80 in the day it was over 75 degrees this morning when I put on the river and it's well over 95 degrees right now it's probably 99 pushing 100 in the direct sun. This bend in the river here is known as Horton's Bend. I have no idea why. I'm going to assume it probably has something to do with people that live here or used to live here. Talked to a couple of kayakers about a mile, mile and a half or so back. And they said that the water's been pretty calm from there to the bridge. And so far I found that to be true. However, they did say that there was a pretty nasty shoal uh, just before you get to the bridge. I could probably manage to walk through, but I'm not even gonna waste my time. Back up river we go. Running about 15 on plane, covering a little bit of ground because we're going to have to slow way up and even uh, do some walking up here in a little bit. I knew it was going to happen, but we're dragging it's ankle deep. It didn't matter what I did with the, with the jack plate or even the trim. We're just going to keep eating the skag and the propeller and just made the call to go ahead and start dragging. It's not too far, it's too deep. There was no way that I was going to try to get back in this boat, get the motor started and everything right at the top of that rapid. So I just came on over to the sandbar here and uh, now I can get back in and fire the motor up in the eddy. Not worry about going back down the rapid and then head a little further north to the next drag spot. Well, I was already dragging my boat anyway, so I figured I would cool off a little again. 
3.30 and I've still got probably half of what I've at least half of what I've came down to go down. Made it back to the ramp, finally. Uh, it took me right at nine hours for my trip today for a total of 25.5, so 25 and a half miles exactly. So, as a new boat owner, new boat captain, right at three months with this boat. Um, taking it out four or five times now. Um, this was this has was probably the roughest trip so far. Um, although the boat, I built it to be a shallow water boat. Um, I had more in mind of running deeper rivers up to shallower creeks. So you gain a lot of time to explore the creek, run on plane, a lot of time. So I was not expecting to come out and run 25 miles of eight inches to uh, six and a half feet on average. Uh, deepest I seen all day was like 11.7 feet down next to my lunch spot. I did not see anywhere else the entire day and the entire 25 miles that was deeper than about six feet, except for the one spot. Now, if someone had a jet boat or even a little John with a jet prop, a jet drive, I'm not sure what the right term there is, but anyways, if they had uh, an outboard with a jet, foot on it or even a jet boat probably could have made easy work of this one and a half to four foot run um, however there are there were a few spots where you saw me dragging my boat that I don't think a jet boat or a mud motor or even a surface prop duck boat would have been able to run on plane up through there I mean it was ankle deep I think even those boats would have struggled today. I know my boat isn't exactly traditional in the fact that it's meant to be a shallow draft boat, but I've kind of made it into that and I'm working with it. And I did learn a lot today on depth, trim, um, where the exact shallowest point that I need to let off. Um, one casualty out of the whole day, as you've probably seen earlier, my light bar got ripped off. Um, simple fix, two more rivets in there. We're gonna send it. I checked the outboard when I loaded the trailer. Skag looks good. Props a little chewed up, but I already damaged the prop from last river trip I went on so I have one on order I'll probably keep the damaged one for the shallow water runs and have the new one for when I know I'm gonna be on deeper rivers or you know deep lakes um, other than 
than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will catch you on the next one.